So um, what I'm going to do now is to actually take a break. So I'll carry on in the next video setting up system boot scripts. So what I'm going to do here is just shut down the machine. But first, if you remember, there's several virtual file systems that are mounted. Um, so I'm going to unmount each one of them. Well, let's see if we can use the minus R option to mount, unmount everything under LFS. No, it's uh, still not there yet. I don't know if, oh, let's try R. Right, it says SDA9 is busy for some reason. So yeah, it looks like that hasn't worked at all. So let's just unmount each one of these. So yeah, that looks okay. And you see we haven't got the SDA um, 7 mounted. Uh, sorry, SDA 9, was it? Yeah, why have we got SDA 7 mounted? I thought that should have been 8, actually. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure why the root is STA7. Um, definitely on LFS5. Oh, that's interesting. If I've made a mistake somewhere, I've been overwriting um, an older version. And that's got five as well. I'm not quite sure what's happened there. Um, and yet everything's been working correctly. Because let me see, that one, that'll be Sue's. That'll be a little scratch one, that's four, so that should be five. Okay, well, I'll try and resolve that myself. But um, apart from that, I'll just shut this down. Okay, um, I've come to turn on the new computer, the Pentium 4, to carry on with the build, and um, unfortunately I've caused a problem by, um, well, when we're building Grub in the last video, I copied the Stage 1 and 2 files and the um, E2FS progs, uh, or the E2FS file system 1.5 stage file, and of course we've shut down the computer and restarted and it won't boot and that's because it's got those uh, stage files for the new version of grub but we haven't installed um basically run make install for the new version of grub so all the um, remaining files are still for the old version however all is not lost it is still possible to boot the machine manually so what I'm going to do is to boot the machine and show you what I did to um, recover this um, and the other issue that I had okay, let's see if I can just sync this up so we can see the first couple of lines right I may have to restart this um, where the um, the other issue was with the partition, the incorrect partition number in uh, the FS tab. So it looked like the incorrect partition was loaded. In actual fact, what had happened, because the 
put a right. I don't know why that first letter's missing. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to carry on as it was. Uh, yeah, the other issue was caused by the fact that I put the wrong partition, or in fact, I hadn't updated the partition when I modified the FS tab file. Um, but luckily, the way the boot works with the kernel and grub, because the correct partition had been specified on the grub um, configuration, it had actually used the correct um, partition. And all that happens during a boot is that that partition is made read-write through the script um, rather than the um, new or the incorrect partition in FS tab being remounted um, or, or rather mounted either over, over the top or in place of the correct one. Um, it'll make sense when I show you that bit. But for the moment, um, like I say, unfortunately, I don't know why the first column is missing. It's... It's to do with the fact that, again, this is an analog signal, so it's got to try and lock on. And I guess because there's very little else on the screen, it's just sort of missing that one character. So it should, should say grub. We're going to have the first character missing on the screen, um, but it won't affect what we do. So the first thing we've got to do is to specify um, the partition that the root data files, sorry, the boot data files, the grub boot data files are on. So we do that in the same way as we did in the grub menu.list files so just say root hd0 comma 1 and you can see it responds that it's found a partition type 83 which if you recall from um, when you use utilities such as fdisk partition type 83 is a, a linux file system in ex2 ext2 linux file system i then type in kernel forward slash vm and it will list all the files that are on that partition that match that string. I've then got to start completing the string and it's version 2.6 we want. And that is the file. That is the correct kernel we want. I then want to specify um, root. So the root partition that the Linux file system is on. The correct one is dev sda 8 which is what the grub menu.list file had. And I want to specify RO to make sure the partition gets mounted read only in case there's any problems during boot time. So if I press enter, um, and now I just type boot and it'll load that image and then try to execute it. And you can see it's executing there. And eventually the kernel will hand over control to init, as you can see, and it's allowed the boot to happen. So this this is what you haven't seen so far. This is the uh, Linux from scratch five that's been um, booted. Let's see if we can reinitialize this again now that we've got um, more information on the screen. No, it's not happening. No, okay. So what I'm going to do now is to log in and then edit. I think in fact I've already made the change. Edit FS tab. And yeah, so you can see that I've just um, changed the dev SDA 8, uh, sorry, dev SDA 7 that was read there, uh, written there to dev SDA 8. So it should all be 100% correct now. And if I mount slash dev slash SDA 7 into, um, let's put it on LFS change into LFS. Um, I'm not sure if there was uh, an LFS release file for LFS2. No, there wasn't. Um, let's go into sources and do an LS. Um, right, let's do LS. Uh, L star. And yeah, you can see there's Linux 2.4.19. And if you recall, the Linux version for, um, sorry, unit name minus eight. Incredibly hard to type at the same time, especially when you're not talking about what you're typing specifically. Um, yeah, if you recall, the version for Linux from scratch five is 2.6.22.5. Plus, we've obviously booted a special kernel for the Pentium 4. So 
that proves that the um, image, at least for Linux, Scra Linux from Scratch 4, is okay. Whether it will boot or not, like I said, on this machine um, is another thing. But anyway, um, I need to unmount um, LFS because I need to mount the correct partition on there. And what I'll do is I'll just log out of this and I'll pause the video and then the next time uh, you'll see something on the screen will be the remote machine again and we'll just carry on remotely. I'm not going to reboot this now because obviously, the, as I say, the um, Grub uh, setup program needs to be run to install the um, files it needs, the remaining files it needs to allow it to boot automatically without having to type in these manual commands as I've just done.